Ladies and gentlemen, I am playing my show Role Play at the famous Lyric Theatre for two nights on Friday the 10th and Saturday the 11th of May 2024. Tickets are half sold out already, which is tremendous and very, um, very humbling. So if you want to come and see what I believe is my best show to date, get your tickets now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and a fan of just humour in general, we have a Patreon, which means you can just get more bonus, funny content, videos, podcasts, early access, tickets, vlogs, anything else that you really want. You can head to patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast. That's patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast. And if you don't want to type it in, you just want to follow a link, it's in the description of the podcast. The Sly Guy Podcast is always brought to you in association with Modest Beer. Modest Beer have been a supporter of the podcast since day one. They have been the loyal followers, supporters and sponsors of the Sly Guy podcast from the very day and hour this podcast came into existence. When I had hair, they've been here. When I'm bald, they've been here too. And if you want to treat yourselves to some delicious beer, head to their website www.modestbeer.co.uk where you can see the entire range of products that Modest have from beers to merch, you can get it all there and if you want to use a wee discount code to save yourself 15% you can use the code SLYPA15 at checkout that's SLYPA15 at checkout to get all things Modest at 15% off I'm the Sly Guy Hello, good evening or good night depending on whenever you are listening to the Sly Guy podcast. You are all very welcome from wherever in the world you're listening. We do not discriminate on this podcast about who can listen or who can enjoy it. Everybody is welcome to the united nation of everyone. That is the Sly Guy podcast. I'm your host, Dave Elliott, and this week is a fun episode. My guest this week is is one of my one of my favourite comedians, and that just means across the board. So not just as an act or as a person, both complete, holistically, this guy is just great. And this episode was one of the funniest episodes we've done in a long time. We obviously covered big topics like CCing and emails. And of course, other work-related things like when it's appropriate to take a bit of you time in the toilet and do something other than a pee and a poo. You know, blow your nose. Haha, <laughs> only joking. Jeez. But we covered all the big topics. We, we spent way too long... Talking about EastEnders, let's be honest, much, much too long, but that's what we're into. It was a fun episode, it was a silly episode, and we have got a, a cause for being from this episode. We are now in search of the country's best Spanish latte. So if you are a cafe or a bar or somewhere that serves up delicious coffees, a coffee shop, get in touch with us and tell us you've got the best Spanish latte. We want people to come and say where the best Spanish lattes are. We're going to do a day of going around the country testing Spanish lattes, but you need to get in touch with the show and tell us where the Spanish lattes are at, where the best place to get Spanish lattes are, and how we can get our dirty, grubby mitts on Spanish lattes. And you know who my guest is? The king of the Spanish latte, El España de Latte himself. The one, the only, Alan Irwin. This was just an hour and a half, actually longer than usual, of silliness. And enjoy the episode of the Sly Guy podcast with me and the Spanish King, Alan Irwin. Alan Irwin's on the, on the show and we were talking off our air there about something that I think is very important. Usually we don't come straight in with like something that could be clippable. I'm a very serious bat, man. But we're CCing in emails, where do we stand on it? It's, it's just wanky, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm fine if you're CCing in to be like, you know, somebody's emailing me to say, thanks very much for that. And the CCM, my boss, my yep. boss gets to hear the good stuff. That never happens. No. It's always, uh, excuse me, uh, I have no reply. Or worse, they're only asking in the first place, but they're like, mm. I don't trust you. No, because to CC somebody, that's making this problem now the CCE's yep. problem. Because they are like have to be 100%. the guardian of you. And then sure because I'm a nice guy, I don't CC back. You know, mm-hmm. So then sometimes my, my boss will come to me a couple of days later and go, what happened with that? Did you sort it? And you're like, you yeah, know, I did, but I just thought there's no point clogging up your inbox with yeah, it. Yeah, because I'm dealing with it. But then the worst thing that happens in that scenario, if you say you're doing something and an email with a CC comes in and then your boss replies before you've oh, replied. Oh, it's the worst. Oh, and then they reply and say, don't worry, I will have Alan look after this. Yeah, so yeah. Because like, oh. actually the whole point of a CC is meant to be, the reason that it, even though it sends the email the same way, it's meant to be like, 
you know, you don't have to do anything with this email. Uh-huh. The people who in the two column have something to do. Yeah, what does CC mean? Carbon mm-hmm. copy. Oh, there, well, there you go. So it's... So it's literally just going, just to make you aware that this is circuit. I suppose it's the idea is like, this is so boring. <laughs> like if we were <laughs> so in an office, boring. I'm your boss, you're off sick, but they, uh-huh. they don't know that they've emailed you, so they CC me in so that I, I know you're off sick so right, I can okay. pick it up. Yes. But otherwise I shouldn't have to look at it. But no, CC now, it's, it's, it's passive aggressive it's a wee, online. It's, 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 it's up there with the regards. Yes. Regards, is, I say best wishes all the time. Yeah. I love to say best wishes to somebody who's annoyed at me. Uh-huh. Because then you don't look rattled, even though behind the screen I'm going, you fucking cunt. Oh, speaking of, of emails and etiquette, my sister was involved in a bit of a scenario recently and she phoned and asked my advice. Go on. For, and like, my sister would be, like, in a, like she's, she would be an introverted person. So like, with regards to her job and things, she's flying, does, does, but any confrontation doesn't like it. Can't, you know, be like if, if she was always dealing with me, no problem. She can mm-hmm. be as confrontational as she wants. But this person, basically, she's in the process of moving house at the minute and is trying to deal with some sort of um, insurance for her current house right. to keep that going. So she basically was dealing with this company and was like, look, what's the best way to keep my insurance going that I'm covered without having to pay you know, an extra month insurance when I'm not here and vice versa in the mm-hmm. new house? And some guy... I. You know when you just get a vibe off somebody that they're, and I mean, do you see appropriate term? A bit of a cock. Yeah, yeah. Like I just divide this. He strikes probably me nice in their personal relationships, but otherwise yeah, a big wanker. But this guy, you know, somebody you just clearly think. I think his problem is I don't think he is up to his job, mm-hmm. and I also think he thinks you know he, he tries to blag his way that mm-hmm. he's that sort of sort of belligerent about so, it. Yeah, so he gave her the wrong thing, which basically meant she had to pay an extra couple of hundred quid. And she was like, well, I, you know, her issue was, like, I basically wouldn't have done this if this is what I would have known was the case. So then she didn't hear back from him, but like, look, can I get a refund on this or what's the crack? Hadn't heard back from him for a few weeks. And she's like, just to follow up on this, what's the situation? And then he wrote an email back saying something like, sorry about that, Karen, I'll get back to it whenever, blah, blah. And now my sister's name's not Karen. Oh, yeah. I thought it was so, for a second. No, 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 it's their name's Fiona. That's, so, a, very, that's a very banger yeah, name, just so Karen, like, you know. Karen, Karen, Fiona different and then before she even replied like, oh sorry I called you Karen there I meant Fiona and then oh she said and that's me, so calculated like, oh what just, a wanker being a cock and also someone's probably in the office being like here do you dare me to do this she's how do I'm fucking on my back because I haven't done my job for the last month looking money back that I've stolen for you know? <laughs> I look at back money she's entitled to yeah and I said what a her, bitch and then she was like what would you do in that scenario and I said well A I would never deal with him again B I would tell I would tell me his name so I can talk about it in the podcast. And then, see, I would ring the office. And I think the most of the move to do there is ask to speak to whoever the boss is in that scenario. But then if he answered, would be like, no, no, I don't want to deal with him. He's not up to his job. He's, inept. He's, a, he's not up to it at all. He can't cope. He is ridiculous. No, I want you to speak to the manager. And then they're like, oh, but the manager's not in. Okay, give me the give me the email address. I want to contact the manager. And then I get on to them and be like, this guy, A, he's called me Karen. B doesn't know the policies and procedures of what his actual doing. name. <laughs> and then C, <laughs> just the, the guys making your customers feel like dickheads. So you see, and then she was like, "Well, what would you do? What would be the ultimate outcome from him?" I'd be like, "I'd hang him outside the city hall, draw him and quarter him, put his head in." The well, spikes. I mean, that, that's certainly a choice. If you want to know what I would do, I'd probably just pay the extra month's insurance. Yeah, I'm weak, but you know what? I used to be like that and be like, "Well, you know, it's easier." And now I'm like, "You know what? Everywhere I turn, there's people trying to." Buck you, so you're like you know. I what? wish, <laughs> no, not in the literal sense, just in the figurative sense, financial sense. Like they're trying to fucking put the hand in everywhere, and it's like you know. I what? wish. <laughs> we need to just go for it, and sometimes it's nice. I think when you get to a certain age, where you like to just you know be proven right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is there, that yeah. you can go. You're, I am. I am five years away from like comparing routes on oh, uh, that's cheap. <laughs> on Google Maps to be like what's the most fuel efficient way to get yeah, here because I, I had one that, that I fight that eventually Catherine had to step in and go it's not worth continuing and I was like it's not the cost she's like it's going to cost you more do fighting this than it is to, no long story short I got given a parking ticket for a uh, I'm not putting a parking ticket on my car on a park private or public car Newton park Arts. it would be yeah it would be public right, so it was the government coming so, after yeah. you so what you're the it? private ones just ignore them yes. don't admit any liability and Just, just that's, if you, that's the only thing you get out of this podcast yeah. never admit liability life hack but it was, a, it was a public one so what had happened I had gone in 
to I was working at the time, and I gone in to go to the office for the day. And this is like peak COVID, and um, it was it was fine. It was quite quiet. I went in and I had to go and use the app. So the Just Park app on my phone. So I tried dealing mm-hmm. with them. Went on, wasn't connecting. I was like, oh, balls. So it's like, fuck's sake, not connecting. Whatever else, that's grand. I go and I'll I'll pop money into the into the meter. I had no money because it's which is for the way everybody yeah. fucking so is, especially during COVID. COVID. Yeah, so that was during COVID. So then I had to go around from that car park to a cash point in Arts High Street, take out a tenner, and then I went into a shop to buy. I don't know Lucas Eight or something. To break the tenner. tenner. Lucas Eight is such break a break money. a tenner yeah, purchase. And, it's like, and as it was in the queue. I went on, the app was working, put on my parking, head to work for the day, no problem. Came home, back to the car, nothing on the car. Right. Oh. Oh, grand. So then I went home about my business and got this letter, and then there's a son of a bitch taking all these photos of my car and popped it up and the timing. So what the timing <coughs> was, I had put on my parking two minutes after I had been But they're supposed to give you 10 minutes grace. They didn't, clearly. So then Fuck this happened. So I argued fucking, it. You should be fucking and, ashamed yeah, of yourself. And I had all the screenshots, all the receipts, Not and you. I was like, <laughs> it's two two minutes. And they were like, doesn't matter. And then I'd argued, I'd been on the phone. And then there's a, like, is there a processing plant somewhere, in like Larn or somewhere? I took ages, and then they're like, you have to send the evidence. So I decided to sit and type up a really long email about, and then like doing a timeline and everything. And this is like, saving you 45 quid yeah, as well, yeah. But it was, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's the bloody principle of it. And I sent this off and then they're reviewing it and I was ringing them, have you reviewed that? Oh, it's not yet. It's got to go to so-and-so here. And then what they do is you see because of the review period, then you're not having to pay the full 90 yeah. because it's, you, have, you have to Correct. pay it in two weeks. So Bastards. That, so that happened and then eventually I was like, well, you know, I was like, if we have to go to court, let's go to court. And Catherine was like, no, you can't. And I was like, you know, if you let me drop this, you're making me give in all my, all my morals, all my integrity. And it's like, <laughs> and so now I, she was like, it'll just, it's it's 90 quid or whatever now, just pay it. Be done. And just she didn't do the thing where she went and paid it for you. No, you know, oh, that's but the that's, worst. That's, but the, that's worst. the threat. She's done that a few times with things where she'll go, "If you don't do this, I'll do it." And then I'm like, "I don't want to do any of these things, but now I'm going to have to do it." You know, like for example, there was a big noise party going on whenever Holly was just a baby and she was we just got her to sleep and it was like a summertime. All the eighteen year olds out the back having a and party. she was like, "Dave, turn that music off." And I said to her, "You were partying with all the eighteen year olds." I've heard the stories. Yeah, but this is all right. I said it was a good old days. I said um, the red team is fine. You know, at the end of the day, it's before eleven o'clock, so statistically, you have to wait till after eleven before you can make a formal noise complaint. Council won't take anything on board. The police won't do anything. They're within their rights. Don't worry about it. And she was like, at two minutes past eleven, coat on. I was like, where are you going? I said, I'm going around there myself. It's after eleven. I was like, no, no, don't do it. She goes, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to do it. No, 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 no I can't. You can't be. Yeah, she's a newborn baby mm-hmm. you know you can't a vulnerable young mother and you're like now nah, you go yeah, ahead the shame you know because this is the thing now I'm all for like I, I would say like I have a bit of my set about being a feminist and it's all silly and you know, all because I've got girls and I'm married here comes but the gen- butt but genuinely I am you know I feel like I don't think anybody should be uh, held back or um, disadvantaged based on their gender you know I think that's just whatever and a bit of good me, man, good in, man. A bit of, and, and that makes me such a the, wonderful person. That radio man. force that comes yeah. coming any day now. So, but the point I had there, I was like, you know what? A bit of me was like, maybe I should let her. You know, maybe if she mm-hmm. wants to grind, and let her. But then I thought, what if they've got knives? Because you know, the kids nowadays they all have knives. All especially in yeah. banger, like in banger. Home, ba- it's, it'll be it's a butter knives, but still, you know, it'd be, it'd be <laughs> a, a fish knife. It'd be a blunt injury, but for the still, haddock. So then I went round and ended up looking like somebody in the EDA because it was COVID, I had the mask on, I had a coat in my hat up. And it, you know when you're trying to work out what to say because you don't want to be like, listen, can you keep the noise down? Because they'll be like, fuck off. So I, I think I said something along the lines of, um, you know, turn the music down here or the next time I won't be knocking. And I walked away. What does that mean? Exactly. I walked away. What does that like, mean? There you go. Next so, time I'm going to come around and fuck you? Like, what yeah. are you? <laughs> you watch out. I think in my head I thought next time I'll be doing your windows in. But then, but then, then they you've done a bigger crime than them. Correct. That's a criminal matter, not a civil one. Yeah, but I was I was certainly not civil at that stage. With have my wife frog marching me into the street. I, do you know I, I have to I have to retract some stuff here, Dave, because I uh, feel like when we started this conversation, I was totally on board. I was like, I'm becoming like I'm exactly like you. Yeah. And the more I hear, the less <laughs> I, I feel inclined to say we're alike. In what way? What what specifically? Well, I I just would be like, fuck it, they're young. Threatening terrorists. Yeah, also, <laughs> though, I sleep with rain sounds anyway, so mm-hmm. I just turn my rain sounds up. Yeah, but the only thing was, 
in that instant, Catherine was already angry, like a baiting bear. I see him <laughs> like a baiting bear. And then if the the baby wakes up, we're all fucked. But the baby hadn't woke up. No, but it was at risk of waking up. Right. So it's okay. It's. Stop. Do you know what phrase I love? I, I forgot about mm-hmm. till today. I said to somebody, "The wind's always in his face." What does that mean? Always unhappy. No matter yeah. you give him a hundred <laughs> quid, he's like, I've, oh, "I have to go and lodge this in a bank for fuck's sake." Yeah, wind's always in his face. That's a good. Is that, is that a local? It must be. I must be a yeah. listener thing because because I've said to a few people and they were like, "I've never heard that before." Yeah, the wind's always in his face. That's actually good because when the wind is in your face, you're like, "Yeah, fuck's sake." That, that is good, but you know what? There are people like that, and what? Do you have, because you know why nowadays everybody's always about wellness, positive thinking, mm-hmm. mindset, oh, fuck that. life coaches. Do you buy into any of that or do you think no. it's all just scat? Uh, scat's a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm, a, I'm an inherently negative guy. Mm-hmm. I'm really trying to work on that. I, I am genuine. Like, I have a therapist. I am really trying to be less mm-hmm. negative. But, like, if I can land somewhere, I've I, often negative people think they're realists, yeah. you know. Like why? Why would anything? Nice, why would anything nice happen? What are you talking about? And fucking so, grow up. So whenever you see these people being like, guys, why are you negative? If there's you go. We've got air in our lungs. Oh, the go the fuck off. Go get the wind in your face. <laughs> yeah, fucking. But then they would be like the wind in the face. It chill. It, uh, it, it fills you full of serotonin. Some things are shite, and not acknowledging that anything's shite means you don't really enjoy the good stuff either. Because you're like, oh, it's all just part of the plan. You're like, mm-hmm. is it though? Is yeah. it is it part of the plan that I stood in this dog shit? Is that part of the plan? That is a good way to think about because there's nothing positive about standing in dog shit, in my opinion. Nothing. Nothing. No. Even if you're the king of dog shit, you'd still be annoyed. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it does. It Do you know what's worse? It. When your dog stands in dog shit, like not yeah. their dog shit. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then you have to wash their paw and they don't know what's going on and they're freaking out. Dogs are never forth giving with their paws either. They do not no. like you lifting their wee stick arms. And they're like, yeah. Like, and especially when they're they're furry as well. And like the, <sighs> the shit's in it and all. There's no more seeing your dog does a shite and it gets caught and it's fucking asshole and you get a pair of scissors and give it a really grim cut <laughs> no like we had like Vinny did a big he had the, he had the shits not so long ago and he took oh and Vinny and he had he had got through the gate and gone upstairs and just what shit the shit the even no, <laughs> he, he, he is the shit in this instance he had somehow knocked through the gate and gone upstairs and like he never shits in the house when the gate is closed and he's in the kitchen see if he's got the freedom in the house He'll oh go, uh, you know, fucking drop a shit brownlove.com you know, oh, do not look that up that used to be really the thing we pranked each other with as teenagers it was like scat porn. Now, when you say pranked, how did you? Well, you would go. Like, did you, you shit would, on your you friends? Would, you would use, you know, like a link masker. Uh-huh. You know, the thing that just gives you like a code. You know, and click that. Uh-huh. Be, but uh, unusually for a porn website, it doesn't have the like. You know, are you sure you want to enter this uh-huh. website? Very it nice. just went straight to it, and it's graphic. Yeah, really graphic. And we used it like a couple of times. We were like. You, you're trying to find something you're like oh I saw this video one time and then you know you're a house party or something and they're uh-huh. like hold on oh guys I found it and then they'd come up but it would be brown love brown love nice because brown love could be mistaken for plenty of other things as well it could but it's yeah, not that no. it's poo it's poo lots of poo and seeing that it's because there's people might not get this who listen to the podcast but there was a, a, a video that was maybe it's infamous certainly in and around maybe my sort of mid-teens um, two girls, one cup. Oh, yep, yep, um, yep. How, uh, how did Brian Love compare to that? Brian Love, by the way, sounds like a shit detective. <laughs> <laughs> Hand in your bed, Brown Love. <laughs> Brian Love and Scat. <laughs> what part of England are they? Probably like the Isle of Wight or yeah, something, aren't they? The like, shite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, it was. Uh, two girls, one cup was, you know. Obviously explicit in a certain sense, mm-hmm. but the girls weren't covered in the matter. Yeah, well... Which is what yeah. they are right at the landing point of brownlove.com. Right, so, um, but in Two Girls, One Cup, for those... I mean, if you haven't seen it... Don't... Uh, d- just... Can I be you? <laughs> don't, yeah. But it, it to me, you can see... Like, I always think it's too graphic when you see it, any of this. You know, I think... Uh, but like, full stop? Yeah, I think it's just that's what Just even a, just like, life, just, I, just having normal sex, yes, and you're like, yeah, there's a bum, that's bum too hole. graphic, but you know what it is? If you see your own, it's too yeah, graphic. Yes. But I, I mean, I look at a, a bum hole if it's there to be seen, but like, I'm not actively searching. But what I don't like is when you see the, the internals of the butthole. It's like, when it's, it's, like, like it's prolapsed. inside out and it's all red. Yeah. No. I think it's, a butthole should be brown, grey, or colours that you would, you know, colours that you would have in an old folks' home. 
should be a fire green. <laughs> but like the, on the carpet? Yes, on the carpet. Co- yeah, colours that hide stains yes. well. Which is exactly yes. what you want in your butthole. Yes, but in this one, theirs was there. They looked like, you know, a shark. Certain breeds of shark can, like, shit out their whole stomach to clean Look, it no, It reminds me of the Sarlacc from Star Wars. You know, the big pit. Yes, the Sarlacc. That is, that is very much... Before they added the beak in the special edition, yeah, obviously. The well, in some cases. But this was just vulgar. And then it was, it, to me, looked like it might not have been real poo. Yeah, I, I think, I, as I recall... Right, so let me see if I can recap this correctly. So one of them does a big poo onto like an ice cream cone yes and then they eat it yes and then oh I feel sick then they make each other vomit on each other yes after having oh my god I'm going to be sick <laughs> which I'm actually it, nauseous yeah so it's it's not pleasant viewing and it plays there's like gentle piano music underneath yeah. it because it was actually a fucking trailer for a film and what was the, the well it was like a 40 film? minute version of it alright okay it's going to the deer hunter or something just a real niche that's a game of Russian roulette <laughs> fuck me what have I eaten today imagine the PR department of the deer hunter being like we know what's going to get eyes in this film what's that give me a cone <laughs> why would there be ice cream cones in Vietnam <laughs> to be fair ice cream would be a similar consistency in Vietnam as it would be in that video <laughs> <laughs> very melted and very humid. yeah I think yeah. more Mr. Whippy than haagen Yeah, you know what I mean yeah. But then again, you could you could it stand a flake in it? Do you think? No, no, no. I think a flake, a flake, a flake would be more consistent of what a poo should be. If you're talking with the Bristol stool chart, like a flake would be. More I think a three or four. Yeah, yeah. But then you got to wonder too. What are those ladies up to? Like, well, do they would they be like oh. never looking their children in the eye? Mostly. Yeah, yeah true. But then you're going, you know, oh, I I, was, I don't have kids. Let's say mm-hmm. hypothetically you had done that. Yeah. Do you think it would affect you as a father? I mean, I think you the can constant fear the that they might find that one if, day. If they find it, I'd have to be like, listen, you know, things weren't always as they are now. See, the danger is, you know, let's say you had done a wee bit of porn, wee yeah. bit of gay porn. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, big, yeah. you know, big, I'm, b- I'm big. All for it. Bearing a bit the, blue, house yeah, and the blue is XXX porn. <laughs> <laughs> And it's in banger. It's a big blue house in banger, right? But like, oh, if you, I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, that. I couldn't do it. Banger. But the odds are, you know, that you're. I mean, some you know, some straight women watch, or some women who aren't straight watch gay porn. But like, the odds are that your children will never come across that realistically. There's so oh, much porn in the internet. Yeah, quite literally. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but there's so much porn in the internet. The odds of them actually find that are pretty slim. Mm-hmm. But if you were in something that went as viral as Two Girls One Cup, which yeah. went viral before you could go viral, like it yeah. predates YouTube. I think you were watching it on fucking QuickTime Movie yes. Player or whatever. Yep. You know, well, I was. Yeah. <laughs> Download. <laughs> but you know. That's different, you know, because then I think you've got that constant fear. What if, you know, the same thing happens? Somebody like, oh, guys, look at this gross video. Yeah. And you're like, that's like, my ma. But no, I, I went to school with a guy who we found a photo just at a, on, on, in a magazine or something, and it was a guy in a corset with his penis in the exhaust of a car. And this guy looked so much like my mate's dad. That was it him? No, but we, we cut it out and was like, is this your dad, mate? And he took it and he went, I don't know and he said can I keep this and I think he went home to go dad's this year and I was like obviously not <laughs> fuck <laughs> Hold on, so what type of magazine were you banned I don't you... know I don't know where we found it. like you wouldn't image. get that in nuts no I don't know where we got it but we had we had this picture you might actually get it in nuts I suppose a bit but like, look yeah. at this you, might no, you can see it. a bollock you can see balls you know, oh, right. it's like there's scrot and shaft available but not belliard you know it's just so like, what's the it? angle on this photo it's like right, and he's not doing it he doesn't like it's weird because he's wearing like a, like a woman's corset and he's just got his uh, no. as opposed to what a, a man's one how many men wear horses like traditionally that guy in AEW where's the corset who no not I can't remember his name <laughs> Billy Ass no um, I'm sure he's, <laughs> he's the only one you yeah. know it's Billy Gunn that's it but this guy but like you know why do you mean Jimmy Havoc no he's he's gone on uh, he's a wrong he's a bad egg um, but you know why something sexual you always uh, equate a face to it like if something is sexual, you're all, it's always like, it's always like an expression like, ooh, or, ooh, or, ooh, hold on, sir, sir, hold on. That's the face yeah. you're making, or the face you associate like, with. People, when people are having sex, it's like they're either like, oh, or they're like, ooh, or they're like, mm, <laughs> this is something. This my guy, dick has right? never been smaller <laughs> than this, this moment. This it's guy. so it's in, I basically have a vagina watching <laughs> you make this, those faces. This guy, right? He just had his welly in the exhaust, and he was just like. So, like side on so yeah it was on his knees 
just with us. I need to try to find it because it's so hard to describe. But do you know this just reminded me that yeah. we did? You know, we get a year book in school. Obviously, you get, yeah. did you do a year video where yes. you make like sketches? And there was a guy in our year who was obsessed with his car. Uh-huh. And so one of the guys did a video where he pretended to be him, and he pretended to have sex with the car in the video. And that guy, I'll not say who, but he is now married to a relative of a Northern Irish comedian. Oh, well, you have to tell me that off, off, oh, yeah. off air for sure. Uh, now, here's the picture, right? So, Oh, my God, you <laughs> find that so fast? Yeah, I, I googled man with penis and exhaust. Is that what his dad looks like? Yeah, and it looks really like him. Oh, my God. So... But yeah, look, do you see what I mean? It's, he's doing that. This guy looks like Charles Kennedy. Yeah, but he's, he's not being... There's one. But There's he's a not reference. being sexual in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's just doing it. Well, he's a little bit sexual because it wouldn't... I mean, that's a very... Really, na- I won't say that's a very narrow a, exhaust. Yeah, it is a narrow exhaust, but like, that doesn't look like it's an erect penis. It looks like it's just been forced in there. <laughs> no, it, does. it also doesn't look like he has any balls. <laughs> well, no, yeah. But you know what? It's a very, it's a strange scenario. Is that a corset? Would you class that as a corset? I would say so. No, it's negligee. It's more like a wee, it's negligee, it's a negligee, yeah. yeah. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I haven't looked at that. It's like if, if you were a, a window cleaner years. in the 70s and a woman answered the door and that, you'd be like, well, hey. Yeah. Ding I mean, dong or whatever. Uh, well, I, I know there's too many things that I don't want to see here. Um, yeah, just close it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close that. I'm going to look up two girls, one cup. No, no you're um, not. No, you're not. No. Uh, I can't, Dave. I can't do it. It's a fucking Tuesday afternoon. I can't sorry, do it. Sorry. No, it, well, we'll not do it. But that was... Um, That's on the Patreon. That was just very... Yeah, it's a strange thing to see. But he, he went home with that photo and he was like, my dad said it wasn't him. So, but he would say that, wouldn't he? Yeah, but then you know He what? looks like... Uh, do you remember Butch in Emmerdale? Oh, yeah, he does. Have a bunch of <laughs> Died yeah. in the bus crash. Yeah. A lot of a lot of bad things happened to people in Emmerdale. Emmerdale was always very sad. Emmerdale was the, yeah, the pub exploded and all that. The, the fucking plane crash. Yeah. You know? That's a good way to wipe out people. I bet that's what it was. They were like, yeah. when you get rid of about 15 characters, yeah. so we'll just do a... I was always more an EastEnders guy. I did that yeah. show about EastEnders, sure. That's right. An, um, hour, an hour on EastEnders. And now, were you in the EastEnders before that hour? I loved EastEnders as a kid, and then I had stopped watching it. And then <laughs> Christmas 2017... We were just skimming through the channels and, mm-hmm. and I was on and I watched <laughs> the episodes of Max Branning is depressed and he's yeah. gonna jump off the roof. And is he, that where didn't he have a son that fell off the roof? Yeah, he did too. Yeah, yeah. that's why he wanted to kill Bradley, himself there because okay. he was like so he goes up and then the two daughters come up to re- stop him and they get over on the and they talk him down. And then one of them for some reason at the top of a roof just randomly takes a step back and then starts to fall off, grabs her sister's arm and they both fall to their death. And I was like, this is incredible. I And then I have not missed an episode yeah. since. I've seen every episode of EastEnders since Christmas 2017. Because I was like, I cannot believe how over so the top that was. both Max Browning's daughters die like that? No, well, one of them was briefly paralysed, but then she recovered. Uh, the other one is dead. And where's Max Browning? Oh, he, he left a, week, a couple of years ago after having an affair with Linda Carter. Danny Dyer was fucking raging. Linda Carter. Oh, that's right. So that was... He's got about Max Browning, hasn't he? Uh, in in the show, yeah. I do the thing where I give you the top three Lotharios yeah. of... Do you want to have a shot at who the top three are? In in, in an order, if you can. It's got to be Phil. Phil's in there, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be Phil. It's got to be Max Branning. He's number one. Max Branning's number one? Number one. Jesus. And now, how long are we going back here? For oh, the, from the beginning. Is it going to be Frank? <laughs> no, Frank only ever had sex with Peggy and... And I mean, you know, Pat. you know what they say. Pat. Like, if you're talking about like quality, he's a quality <laughs> over quantity. Yeah, uh, the yeah. revolving dicky boat. That to me is the greatest moment in the history of soap. Oh, it's it's so good. I I, I love Frank. Frank. Frank leaving EastEnders after having a nervous breakdown is my earliest memory. Yeah, which is like 1983. Of EastEnders. No, in, in, in life. Of life. That's my <laughs> earliest memory of life. And then weirdly, what do you think? So then during lockdown. Uh, you know when you fucking there was no TV remember they just started to stop making TV yes. for a while so I was like oh look they, do, they show like classic EastEnders at lunchtime and I put it on and it was the fucking episode where Frank went away after having a nervous breakdown it was weird and what are some of you like so the last one no but I mean when was he active sexually this character is oh it? like throughout is that Dirty Dan is it no sure no. he he was yeah. away for years but then because he was doing the real life webcam hook wanking having a wank yeah and bitching about his co-stars while in the dressing room <laughs> wanking <laughs> I mean what a way to do it they're um, not very professional yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah you can't say somebody's unprofessional while masturbating no 
but I mean, it's weird that that's still in his mind when he's doing that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I would have a totally clear mind. I would clear the slate entirely. Yeah, I'm, if anything, I'm just trying to dampen down all thoughts. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, okay, I don't know. Oh, Kieran's run over by five minutes. Boy, oh, you know. <laughs> to be fair, you, you could just do that anytime. <laughs> but who, who, who? I mean, I would be tempted to say Grant. No. But if, I don't know who. Ian Bale. I, Ian Bale. Ian Bale's number two. Oh, why? Phil was number like, three. Ian Bale's been two. married like five times. Remember he pretended to have he was dying of cancer, so Mel would marry him. Mel though was that was the top of her. She was like, yeah, prime nineties toddy. And she him when she found out, didn't she? Yeah, he was a wee rat guy on New Year's Eve. Uh, and where is, didn't Ian disappear and then come back as like homeless or something? He was, was and he, he had a nervous breakdown after his daughter was murdered, and then he became like a homeless guy for a while, and then he who was his daughter? Uh, Lucy. And she was, was about a, 10 she years was ago. A bit of a wrong one, wasn't yeah, she, she had a thing with Max as well. That's right. And then she died, and then there was like Who two murdered her? Uh, her wee brother. He hit her with a fucking jewellery box or something. Oh, what a dick. I know. They were doing Bookie's Odds and all, but he yeah. wasn't even on the list. That's dodgy. See, that is so, dodgy. um how are we going on to this? How the fuck are we going on to this? We're talking about. I don't even know. Oh, then I'm Ian, yeah, Ian yeah. was in it for a couple of years. Then he married Sharon. Uh huh. Uh, but unbeknownst to, sh- to him Sharon knew that he had accidentally killed her son so then she slowly tried to kill him by poisoning him with carbonara <laughs> and filling it full of drugs so Sharon 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 get my pub Sharon yeah yeah oh, yeah wow. was uh, it Dean? Mm-hmm. and how did he kill her son um, he locked him in a room because he was annoyed at him on a boat and then the b- <laughs> the more you talk <laughs> <laughs> the boat sank oh no they, were, they had like a but he couldn't get out because Ian Bale had locked him yeah him. and she, he thought Sharon didn't know but she did and he was in love with Sharon and how did she know Um, the wee boy had phoned her and left a voicemail uh-huh. like panicking whenever he was drowning so Ian Bale's locked me in the car yeah so then she like filled his spaghetti full of drugs trying to kill him and then he figured it out and he felt so guilty that he <laughs> He tried to eat the spaghetti really quickly, uh-huh. and then she was like hitting him to get the spaghetti out of his mouth. It was uh-huh. bizarre. That is so bizarre. So bizarre. <laughs> and then he left, and he came back with fucking. Uh, remember Cindy, his wife in the nineties? Yes, she's alive now. Faked her death. But did did he, his man not fake her death as well, Kathy? Yeah, <laughs> in South Africa. Or There's been a real rush on it. You want to say these things are like buses? Yeah, the women in your life faking their deaths. So. He was back, like, so him and Cindy were a couple again. Mm-hmm. Where did Cindy go and how did he find her? Well, so Cindy was a, she in prison had testified, she was a tout, she testified right, to somebody okay. in prison and then they gave her witness protection. She like an sp- RA? Basically, yeah. Oh, but that wasn't part of the story, it was like local gangsters. Local gangsters, right? right. So then she, <laughs> they gave her a new life in Spain and she married this guy and they had two kids and then she had to do an hour runner again because uh-huh. something happened and then she, she contacted Ian. But then, this is so contrived, her ex-husband, the one she married in Spain, got married to the landlady of the Vic. So they, they live in the Vic now as well. <laughs> I love it. Because it's such a small world. So they small. all live in... Like, the Slater house has about 18 people in it, yeah. a four-bedroom house. Nobody has a washing machine. They all go to the laundrette. Yeah. They all talk about how broke they are over pints in the yeah. pub. And nobody has a car. There's just the taxi. Yeah. And you know what they, they, I think they've done in recent years? They've, they've really brought in the tube station. Oh, the tube station's a big, big part of it now. They've made a big yeah. spot now. Big spot. And the chicken shop, they love going yeah. to the chicken shop, McClunkies. So is it is it happening now? Is it still is it still good? Like, well, would you be into it? Or cause it it's funny, like they did, they did a good storyline at Christmas there, uh-huh. right? Where uh, they had the six, six women, right? Uh-huh. Who all had reason to want a particular man dead. And what did who, it was... Who was it? Let me get... Who was it, the guy? Was it <clears throat> your man... Oh, who was it? Tell me him so. It was Keanu, the uh, the young guy that Sharon had an affair with, the right. young lad. Yes. But what they did was they set it up so all of them had one of these six men's going to die, and one uh-huh. of these. Six, so what they did was in like March. Yeah. They did a flash forward, and showed you the six women in the pub, and didn't explain the context, yeah. and then built up to the Christmas, and then they're all involved. That's good crack. So that's kind of like what they're doing with the whole. It's good Cody, Cody TV. And Roman Reigns. Exactly. The, the long build. To finish the story. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't know, fucking Phil Mitchell's going to come in and go, no, actually, this is my storyline mm-hmm. now. 
<laughs> yeah, well, he would be the Rock, wouldn't he? He would be the Rock. Yeah, he's In bald. fact, Grant, Grant would return. Wouldn't Grant he? would, because Grant looks like he's yeah. got the build, you know. Grant. Do you know? Um, I just want to say a quick story about Ross Kemp. Um, just since we we're talking about him, uh, I think they get off this. I was uh, I was in London at an award show with William <coughs> once for our, our wee Blap got nominated for something, and we were, as we were, were no oh. as we were sorry for, sorry to, yeah, to no, the, no, the poke of the memory. No, we didn't. I was like, well, well, you know, it was a nice night, free drink, and we went there, and as we were walking out. Uh, Ross Kemp oh. was walking out just uh, in a Ross Kemp manner and then he went into the toilet for a piss I assume or a poo maybe or a wank <laughs> if he's like dirty den <laughs> he's like oh I can't wait might have done um, a couple of lines yeah, you wouldn't well, know but um, he went in there and Willie was walking out with us and he was like I need to go in and here I can't. and we were like what's weird is Willie's needs where he wouldn't even think of him as Grant yeah, but he, he thinks of him like, as yeah, Ross Kemp he, Willie just wanted, I don't know, to look at Ross Kemp in the toilet. Well, it was his Willie, his body. Just super Army Soldiers. Do you remember him in Extras? He was yeah, fucking brilliant. Super Army Soldiers. Yeah. They, I've worked with people. They tell me that's yeah, what it stands for. Yeah, but he, he, he is brilliant. But yeah, Willie just went in to look at him. I was like, what are you doing there? And he's like, oh, I just, just looked at him. So did, Willie didn't <laughs> pretend to go for a pee. He just no, he looked just kind of at, went in because he wanted to look at Ross Kemp for a bit. And that was. Is he a handsome man? He, really? He's sh- much shorter. You know, oh, being, I picture him being like six yeah. three. I thought he'd be a, a, a giant guy, but he's quite wee. Really? But yeah, he's he's Ross Camp. You know, he's. Um, but there was a, a woman who was in Love Island, at it who in real life very pretty, but she wasn't wearing a lot <coughs> of a dress right. going on, and it was one of those ones where I was like, oh my god, I don't know what to do with my eyes, where to divert them. But I remember that being more like concerned about where I'm looking at this woman than I was to rush in and look at Ross Camp's penis. Name and shame. Who was she? Her name was Chloe somebody, I don't know what her surname don't know. is. But she's blonde and she went out with the guy who was in Love Island Superstars or Love Island. So it didn't work out then obviously. No, no, recently. But yeah, she was just like there, but was wearing like a real see through dress and it was like you know, you, you just turn into like like a little embarrassed teenager or something. I was like, well, what do you do? All the time. I would see I would have rather run in and done like a knee slide. At Ross Kemp's, um, I say knee slide. I think you said knee slide at her tits. No. I was like, why? <laughs> a belly slide at Ross Kemp's penis region, and just look right at it, or else pretend that that's the perfect. He's pissing. You pretend to be Phil, and <laughs> you know the wee, the wee like mechanics slider and slide under. Or oh, Grant, you know, I'd rather have done that than I would have had to like know where to look at her because it was so. Play a tape of you bucking his wife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's one of my first Easter memories. Yeah. Phil being pushed down the hole in the arches. Or like falling down the arches, or was oh, it Grant? One I, of them got I hit. Was Phil, I think it was Phil. Yeah, but it's because Phil was doing line with Sharon, yeah, was, who was married to Grant. And it was Grant that pushed him down the hole mm-hmm. in the arches. Because this is the thing they forget. See, in the nineties, yeah. Phil was like the sensitive one. Yeah. And Grant was the psychopath, and yeah. then they went, "Oh, Grant's not here anymore, so Phil can just be a psychopath." But then Phil, Phil was fond of the grog, wasn't he? He wasn't. Then he became a crack addict. Nice. Like uh, banter or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he loves the knock knock jokes. Uh, no, but he ended up like getting addicted to crack and then he needed a new liver. But here's the thing. And I don't he mean burned the Vic down. I don't mean to be mean. But Phil's kind of stayed at a generic shape the entire time. <laughs> Big egg, man. Yeah. So, I mean, if he's going to be a crack addict, I'm just saying. <laughs> shift a few LBs you know <laughs> go on like do like you see like um, Christian Bale and The Machinist that's what I want right, you want that from Steve McFadden yes I want to see Steve Mc- you know he's one that you know people like we were having a, a, the discussion in the house and it's, it's always such a wanky thing to do but we were watching um, that Har- the latest Harlem Coben show on Netflix and had Michelle mm-hmm. Keegan in it and All we right. were just going remember she left Coronation Street to go and crack Hollywood and here she comes back <laughs> back to Britain for you know <laughs> so I'm like, hit on this show with blah 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 and you like, and we're sort of like, no one ever makes it from this soap no you know we're being really snide about it and I think it's horrible but and then Catherine was like if anyone was to make it from the soaps who would who would you choose? And I was like, I'd love to see Steve McFadden be like <laughs> the new equaliser or like you know <laughs> yeah oh if it. Jason if anything ever happens to Jason Statham yeah oh they'll get him on those Hollywood roids Steve McFadden will take over although he, the thing about Steve McFadden is he has to take two months off every year to do Panto yeah true so and if you could bring someone back like June Brown I'd love her to come back and break it Ooh. Oh, oh, I'd bring back anybody fucking Mike Reed big Frank Butcher yeah he'd That's be really great cool. in Hollywood seeing like an Ocean's Eleven type thing you know what he would be brilliant in any of the you know the, 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 the East End gangster films if you made him like oh, a Lockstock. crime boss yeah. I feel like was he in one of those 
Well, he, I'm sure he would have been. Maybe not the big ones, like, but I feel like yeah. he was in one of them. He, you ever seen him do stand up? No, I imagine it'd be blue. It is blue, but yeah. he used to put on all the time on like Men and Motors or something. Oh. But it's like an hour, but he does about 380 jokes. You know, one of those mm-hmm. guys who talks really fast. Yeah. But it's like the audience is all EastEnders cast members. It's a good crack. Oh, He's mean, very old school, but yeah. I enjoy him. I, I just like, I, I, like, I like the way he spoke. Oh, Pat. Frank. <laughs> Like, he, uh, he's one of those oh, guys darling. he couldn't be anybody else in any other like you couldn't imagine him just cropping up in CSI or something no no, yeah. no definitely not no uh, maybe it's yeah. a corpse yeah uh, and a then, bloated corpse they find in the ocean <laughs> you know why sometimes corpses let out a wee bit of like air <sighs> if they just let him out he's like alright you know he's not speaking is he alive be a lot of fun say what you want to say but, I love him but yeah I mean Peggy Peggy was a babe for an old lady. Oh, see, and young Barbara Windsor, oh. Ding Dong is right. Yeah, <laughs> Sid James died for her. Oh yeah, Quite so, uh, so would I. Yeah, but I mean, all I'm saying is, I don't know what she's like personally, on a personal level. <laughs> and like Peggy could, Peggy could have your head turned, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. I just want to, and you're. That's like, you why know, you go back to Pat. Yeah, and it's, but then if on paper, if you're just like judging them on the parents. You would go with Peggy all day, you know. You well, would. you would, yeah. Yeah, but then Pat, she's just the one for for Frank, isn't she? That, that's and that's the whole point. It's like doesn't matter how yeah. attractive the other woman is. It's Patty loves. He yeah. left. He waited. He left his first wife for Pat. Mm-hmm. He left his second wife for Pat. Every story goes back to Pat. You're the Pat. one for me, Pat. It's actually a beautiful love story, apart it from is. all the affairs. Yeah, but then you know what? Do you forgive an affair if if it's for true love? Well, I probably won't be forgiven because I imagine it's over. <laughs> yeah. I don't, it doesn't really matter whether I forgive it or no, not. I mean, if you're watching, you know, so you're not I'm watching. So yeah. they're like, I want to have an affair, but I'd like you to watch me fuck them. No. <laughs> and also, crucially, in an album that's normally lacking from open relationships, I love them more than you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, uh, but what I mean <laughs> what is... What kind of deal is that? <laughs> Look, I like to open a relationship... But you have to watch, and also I love them more. But then that's I. That's why you I mean call me old fashioned. I, I I'm quite content to be. I'm just, monogamous, like yeah, definitely. Ma- because I mean, I think any time you think I'd like to try something else, I don't think you're fully in. I just think no. I would just worry you'd have like I don't know a threesome, and then you'd be like, oh, they're having a better time. <laughs> I'm too insecure. Yeah, but that would maybe be the key. I would not like to watch. <laughs> Catherine with another man I wouldn't ah oh, fuck I don't point I, asking now you know, I wouldn't like to watch me with another man either I wouldn't like, like to watch you for stuff yeah. to be honest with you, but, but, but yeah I just feel like it would be it, I can't ever figure out how agreeing to that would be a good idea but, but here's the other thing I can see how right see how? let's use you and Catherine as an yeah. example right I could see how um you, you, you and Catherine were looking a third. I can see why they'd look at her and go, "I all right," but you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I'm seeing with me yeah. and my ex-wife. I was like, I can see people go, "Oh yeah, I'd be up for that." Uh-huh. But then you're like, "But also, this wee gro- ginger ball guy has to be in the room, <laughs> wanking." <laughs> but you don't have to wank. You just be. I do. Them, I do anything to convince myself <laughs> I'm having a good time. But that's that's not the goal. You're not a wank. You're like, I'm not. In, I thought this would cheer me yeah. up, and it's not. <laughs> But that's surely not this is the the sign for you that you're having a good time. <laughs> like I've seen you at gigs laughing, and never once have I seen you go, "Oh, this is great." <laughs> It'll be a strange. Coach. Those aren't poos I'm doing in the <laughs> library toilet. <laughs> Me and Ross Camp <laughs> and Willie just underneath. <laughs> underneath, it. he probably would too. The dirty yeah, bastard. Uh, but then I don't want to think. Oh, you're watching Max Branning's daughters fall off the thing, and you're like, "Oh, this is <laughs> masturbating." <laughs> At Wembley watching AEW. <laughs> Scissor my daddy yeah. ass. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Oh, God. Oh, dear. But no, I think that's... I just want to put it out there. Anybody not open to three... Catherine, if you're listening, I'm, I'm good to not bring anyone else into the relationship. And then what if they just come in and they fuck it up and then they leave again and you're just left back away? Well, that's what you worry about. Well, like you, can't, you can't put the cork back in the bottle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Once you've seen, yeah. you know, oh, you know yeah. we know where we're going. Yeah, I, 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 but you know what yeah. I'm saying? You're like, then you go, oh yeah, they had a great time there, but, and I was uncomfortable, so they're like, okay, we'll not do that again. You're like, yeah, but I'll always know. Mm-hmm. And then it'd be weird banter too. It'd be like, oh, remember I, that was good fun. I mean, 
Mm. Don't get me wrong. If everybody involves single, I'm thinking jump on board. Come oh. in, the water's fine. Yes. You know, yeah. Because also you can be a wee bit more selfish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're like I, I don't. Know. I've never seen these I mean, people you again. Know what? Yeah, in a relationship, no. But I wouldn't be against like if I was single or going to swingers party. I think that might be good fun. Yeah. I feel like I'm you the know? kind of guy that they wouldn't let me in by myself. They'd be like, you have to bring a woman with yeah. you. But then if you just went in with like trousers, <laughs> I'm like I'm already having a good time. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> Then it's such a, again like we watched the show about the swingers that was on Channel Four last year and it was such a strange world because they like were they were like filming the different people who go to it so just like a couple or like yeah we're going this we're really into it and blah 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 and it was just this young dude like in his like maybe mid twenties being like I mean you just go around and you have sex with those people it's kind of cool no? but see like, well, it 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 it's something I, I'm sure there are examples out there where everybody's equally into it but it always feels like you know, like the Louis Theroux documentary about swingers and all yeah. there's always one of them's not as into it as the other one yeah. but they're like but I love them so I will you know put up with this Yeah. and I, you don't want to be that guy you don't want to be the guy who's like I mean I, I, I cry myself to sleep every night but I love her you know Yeah. I would in that point go you know what maybe I don't love her <laughs> maybe I'm just trying to convince myself I do for some maybe reason. I'm not having a good time but then, maybe I should put my oh, dick away say you're writing free standards and there's swingers going on the they've ultimate, never done that they should you know but you know what the ultimate comeback is quite literally <laughs> is to not enjoy swinging with your partner but then when you you two maybe break up go swinging to oh. the same venue she would go and then just be we'll like, go where again where do you touch my feet there <laughs> Talk, yeah, didn't time to. We're talking that was uh, footsie uh, that was electric yeah. I have to say <laughs> yeah that would be never like, mind the threesome let's just buck <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com forward slash slag eye podcast for Bonus content and swinging. That'd be no one's done that on Patreon yet, have they? Here's me bucket. No swinging, going to swingers exclusive, like the exclusive TV. Well, because Patreon's a fiver a month. Yeah, <laughs> but just send send some people. It, right, if you were to right, this is my favorite kind of. Shane doesn't strike me as a swinger. No, no, he he wouldn't be. I wouldn't say. But if you had to pick, he used to be home by ten. They're always late at night. Exactly, like an afternoon ones, you wouldn't get the quality. No, this, you don't want to be having an orgy and there's sunlight coming in through the blinds. No, absolutely not. You'd like to be, you know, you, if you're having an orgy during the day with blind people, that would work. But but you you need to be blind too. Oh yeah, shit, I wouldn't. Maybe would I? Actually, you just have an orgy with people who could see, but you'd be blind. That would work. To just, just guide your eyes out before your first <laughs> orgy. Imagine that was the entrance fee. Your eyeballs. And you just, you'd a man called Gideon in a cloak that collects your eyeballs in a pouch. Thank you, you can collect you, upon the you, end. I mean, you get them back, but they're not necessarily your eyes, or even yeah. a pair. You've yeah. got like a blue one, you're David Bowie. Yeah. Well, well, that's what happened to him. But then also, I think the, the retina would need to be red hatched. Um, I get, don't know, I'm not, I didn't do great at science at school. Your eyeballs are just there like Mary Antoinette's head, <laughs> just all these fucking things hanging yeah. off them. Pop them back in. That was Done. fun. Doof. Yeah. So sorry, what were going to ask you? Said is if you were to, if because again, you know, I think, and this is a good thing and a bad thing, but it's mainly a good thing. I think on the whole, our scene is a pretty good place. Yeah, of comedy. I don't think there's, if any, Hallians out there. However, if a story were to be to break, mm-hmm. that you would find out one comedian was involved in a bust at an at an at a, at a swinging con like. Convention, almost like a prohibition style club. It was a big illegal swinging mm-hmm. thing, and you were to find out one comedian was there. Which comedian would you would Fuck. would make you go hee <laughs> the most if you found out? As in, like, who, who would I not be shocked? But no, like, who would you just <coughs> enjoy to find out? Like, you know what? I would be thinking, who would be a left field one that would make me go, "Oh, it's a surprise." Hmm. And who would you enjoy to know that they were in the swinging? I think there'd be something quite funny about it being Gaddis, I have to say. There's yeah, I mean, that would definitely be left field. I wouldn't expect that from him. No, 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 no. Yeah, it would be. Gaddis would be funny. Um, who else would. Kieran Bartlett would be very funny to me. That's a wee dirty, yeah, let me tell that you. Is a wee dirty. I like the, I'm, if he went to review a swingers club, oh. imagine the stuff he'd have to eat in there. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10, come. Oh, I know the the donut itself wasn't great, but the glaze. Mm. <laughs> That's a wee dirty. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm really thinking hard. Like names are going through. It's like a Rolodex in my head, trying to land them. I'm actually. I look at the table because there's no mm-hmm. signatures here. See, Butler wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Um, Mickey wouldn't shock me. No. Um, William wouldn't shock me. No. Johnny Bow would shock me. Johnny Bow would shock me. Does he hold the book while he's doing it? Yes. <laughs> um, Fraser. Fraser 
Would that shock me? <laughs> yes, it would. It would. No, it would yeah. shock me. Yeah. Luke McGibbon wouldn't shock me. No, Andrew Ryan, Ryan. Andrew Ryan would shock me. Andrew Ryan would shock me. This is a golf course at the Swingers Club. You know what? I think Andrew in the Swingers Club would be hilarious because I don't think he would be in. He would. He would have found himself in the <clears throat> Swingers Club by accident. Yep. And he would be like evaluating it. That he'd be. He'd be doing the health. And he'd be doing a, a feasibility study of the Swingers Club to see if it was an appropriate venue. It could be somewhere more efficient. <laughs> he'd be doing health and safety <laughs> checks around there with the clipboard. Uh, Mar- Mark McCartney would shock me. He's actually one who wouldn't shock me. Really? Well, him just uh, like, you know him better than me, so I'll defer to you. out in the country there, just the wee, a wee swingers club. McKegney wouldn't shock me. No. Jordan Robinson would shock me. Mm-hmm. Would well, I the, shock you? Yes, actually, yeah. but I would also like it. I think I'd be like... Oh, you're like, 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 he might as well become a swinger, why not? You know what, I mean, listen, I think, I also, also think, you know, if, if you're involved in a scenario where it's all consent and adults having a good time, who no harm. Judge. I, you wouldn't. You would shock me. Yeah, I would shock myself. Yeah, I think so. I mean, how do I end up in here? I'm trying to think of anybody else that would be. There's nobody leaping out at me. No, I think. I think mm-hmm. I'm done. I think I've got. I've got all my shock and on shock. Ronan Linsky would shock <laughs> me. Yes, just a bite. But yeah, but there's other like I remember there was a wee old lady. Karen Frago has a mustache now, so it wouldn't shock me. No, true. Sean McLeavy would shock me. That would shock me. Yeah, a lot, actually. Um, but then I would like it to be him, too, because it would be like, I didn't expect that off you, fair play. Yeah. But you want to be shocked. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why people enjoy two girls, one cup so much. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, listen, what I think we should do, get get it on TikTok. Get it trending again. Don't Let the younger generation see it. No. You know, see all this, like, flossing and shit. No, I want to see proper You want to see him flossing with shite? Just, I want to see, see flossing and shit. Hold the floss and just give me the shit. That's what I want to see. Two girls, one cup, 2024. 20, that is the year. Yes, you you were unsure there for a moment, weren't you? I did, and you said 2023. I'm, I'm bad for that. Back to the emails at the beginning of the podcast, I would be signing off emails 2023. Uh, I did it one time in a letter to a, a member of the public. Brutal. Oh, no, what did you do? The wrong year? Wrong year. Bet you they loved that, and they were like, actually, it's I, the wrong I, year. They, yeah. they were like, I think you're fine, it's actually 2024. And you're like, yeah, but it's still a no. <laughs> Yeah. But you know what? I love it whenever people do we error on a, on a spelling error. I don't know why I think it's so funny. Like I had an old boss who got a promotion to become his title was a housing services manager, and he sent a big email to the whole office, being like, you know, I just let you know I'm acting up now in this new role. My doors all like you know, my doors always open if there's anyone <laughs> come to me. And he wrote his name and underneath it, he had written uh, acting. Uh, senior housing services officer manager sorry but he didn't put a C in the end of services he had typed X by mistake so it read acting housing services manager <laughs> and he said that everyone all the way and we're like look at you've done he was so embarrassed there was a woman I worked with she uh, she was uh, they were talking about getting some garden work and they were like right we'll have a wee think about it over the weekend we'll get yeah. back to see if we're going ahead and she texted um, after much thought over the weekend mm-hmm. we're going to go ahead but autocorrect changes to after masturbating over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> We've decided to go ahead. After <laughs> masturbating. Which, uh, to be fair, I think you should masturbate before any yeah. big decision. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, ever, you, you ever done that? You spent money and then you have a wank and you go, I wouldn't have spent the money if it had yeah. the wank. Yeah. Or had a row. Yeah. And went, if it had the wank first, it wouldn't have rowed. Yeah, it, it's That's why Ross Kemp's always so calm. Yeah. <laughs> but then, did everyone be like, excuse me, were you... Were you masturbating? Or no, no, no! I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but I say yeah, but yeah, because what do they say? We go either way. I'm getting the job. I suppose yeah. even better. Oh. But like, I'm trying to think of was yeah, there was one that I worked with a man who he's probably I think he's retired now, but he was like maybe when I was working there in his maybe sixties, and he was very funny. Shout out to Massey if you're listening. Massey, but Massey was like he did a few things with the manager that was like. You, as someone young watching the office, we're like, I would love to have that level of both confidence and just have such a brass neck to do this. Like, this one day he was playing a game called like, like it was like Bubble Destroyer. Or oh, something. a Bubble Bubble, yeah, bubble yeah. And he was just boop, boop, shooting that, and the manager came out of the office and he's boop, boop, and he goes, "What are you doing, Massey?" And he goes, "Like, you shouldn't be playing games and like you're on the clock or whatever." And he goes, "Oh, this is not a game." Boop, kept playing it. And he was like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Oh, what's you happen here? See, see the, the red ones." And he was like, "He goes, that's ten into rears." And see if I just hit this, boop, I'm just clearing the rears. And he just sat. And the manager just kind of went, 
I you got to admire the gumption. Not the way, but then same manager, same thing. He sent a mass email out or a mass letter. So he had to print them all, put them all, and post them about um, like a redevelopment scheme or something in, in an area. So he sent all this out, and then she came back. He was messing again. Call you? And he goes, yes. It was. A few of these letters have come back, and you've written here. I, I'm assuming it's a typo. You've written, "Dear sir, I'm madman." Did you <laughs> mean that? I'm actually instead of going, "Oh, oops." Went, Sorry. Yeah, I did. Thought it'd be a, a, a laugh, <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> "You'd be no, a little worse now." Yeah, you can't do that. And it was just, oh, it was just, and then he ended up getting a disciplinary because of that because he admitted to to doing that. But and there's a, a friend of mine um, worked in an office one time, and she started swimming. And a guy in the office went, oh, you're going swimming, are you? Do you have goggles? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she went, yeah, do you? He goes, you sure? And then he leaves under his desk and lifted out a cardboard box full to the brim with goggles uh-huh. that he had just lifted from the side of the pool over the yeah. years. Like, would you like a set? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, absolutely not. I don't want 40-year-old goggles <laughs> that probably are coated in verrucas. Like, wait, but how... Great a moment was that for him. Like that was he was. Being He's like, warm. I've kept this just in case <laughs> there's a rush. <laughs> and he just had like a box full of goggles. Just a box full of goggles. I thought you were going to tell me there's some sort of disciplinary there, and I was like, oh, what is it? I thought for a minute when you reached down, I thought you were going to be like, <laughs> he grabbed her bum and went bop 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 bop, something like that. But no. What? <laughs> so there was like, a. I mean, I worked in um, call center of like, Sky or whatever, and they had their their Christmas do, and one guy got wrecked and thought it would be very funny that while the chief executive was making the only serious speech mm-hmm. of the night, they would jump up the stairs and do the helicopter. <laughs> and uh, they, he kept uh, his job amazingly. How? I don't know. But then nobody must ever be sacked. But that. he's the sort of guy like he loved. Apparently, in the call center, he would go. I mean, I dropped my pen under the desk here. Would yeah. you grab it for me? And he'd lean down. He was doing the helicopter. <laughs> I'm just jealous because I don't have the length to get the purchase to do this. No, swing. mine's more like the blade at the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the way, the way I'm fast. I'm do the rudder. Like, you know, the thing that stops the door from hitting the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love those. <laughs> Twang. <laughs> oh, no, work, work was great. Like, I, I think I've told this before, so I'll not go into too much detail. But I got... There was a girl I just was your dress like Mick Foley. I know. I threw that on just for bang you. Bang. I just wonder when it would come up. But um, there was a girl who I I was I got on quite well with, but she was like, "I'm gonna make a complaint about you." But you? Yeah, about me. And I was like, "What is that, love?" No, I didn't. I was like, "Why is that?" And she goes, "Well, um, basically, so we we got on grand. There was nothing I thought would be an issue, but she came to me at the printer and was like, "Can I discuss something with you?" And I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." What's up? And she goes, I, I don't want to talk about it now. I'd rather chat the after work about it. And I was like, oh, fuck, what have I done? And I was Fancy really, you? like going through my, and my brain going, what the fuck is this? Have I done something? Have I said? Do you know sometimes you can like say something to other people and it's like we joke and maybe you think, fuck. Like you're I, trying to go back yeah. over your conversations and like. It's like there's nothing. It's I the have. old if you've had a few pints and then you text somebody and they just don't reply immediately yeah. just because they just don't. And you go. Did I, what did I say what, and you go yeah. back through your it's going but have I, I pissed them off fuck, what is it and so then because we, we, we would have like okay I would have walked to my car and she would have walked on to her house because I'd never offer a lift because I mean exercise is, is, is a vital part of being human and she was like saying you know, chatting away and she, goes, and she started to cry and I was like oh no like I was really stressed out and there's something there's yeah. something deep within you where you're like the crying immediately yeah. you go oh no yeah and it was you know, like she goes I've heard you are getting a page three calendar for Secret Santa. And I was like... You're getting? Yes. So somebody had bought me... So why is that a complaint about you? I don't know. But she was like, I didn't think you were like that. And I was like, let me stop you. I don't know what I'm getting. (laughs) It's Secret Santa? Yeah, I don't know. You don't even know who's getting it? But then she's like, if you bring that into the office, I'll have to make a formal complaint about you. And I was like okay that's fine and I was like don't worry about it I'll say to the who, and like so then she's like who who got it for me and she told me and I was like well I just go and say it to them you Don't haven't leave. done anything wrong here yeah. this w- and also you wouldn't have brought it into the office anyway no what year was this this would have been maybe about probably about the guts of eight or nine years ago right now. so nobody was bringing it's certainly not in public sector uh, offices no, nobody no. had a fucking paid street calendar in no. 2014 but like. what I would have done would have been taking it home <laughs> and mastered no I would have taken it home probably <laughs> taken it home and, and then done that and then made a big decision yeah I would have taken it home and hung myself because somebody bought no I would have taken it home and probably put it in my garage you know yeah for, for a child to find and have yes. the, the vintage introduction yes. to boobs do you know what? That like that was back when page three was kicking around. It's not anymore. You know, it's, then that's fine. 
But I, I remember... You're, you don't sound like it's fine. No, you know, listen, it's part of my childhood. It is what it is. But if, you know, I think if people want to do it and that's how they pay their money, fair play. But also, you know, if people think it's inappropriate, that's also fine. There's room for everything in the world. But I was trying to go like, I'm. but I don't know about this. This is... I, I'm not party to this decision. Are you like the victim here? Yeah, but then she was like, yeah, but you must have... Oh, you're the type. You must have planted seeds. Oh, you're like I love looking at tits. Yeah, and then when what would you have done? Can yeah. we just in an email just CC in the end of this email yeah. here? I love tits. Yeah, bear that in <laughs> mind for Christmas, please. But then, yeah, and then you have to be. And I was like, you know what? And then after that, like our relationship did sour. Like we were friends. Do you love reading the Sun? Is that what's going on? <sighs> well, no, I actually didn't even. You know, it was you know just, it's not even like they were like, oh, he's no. all, he's never he never has a head out of the Daily Star. Yeah, but for some reason, and I did, and like. Then I went to tell the person, and then she ended up losing the head about. It. She's like, "How dare she tell you this and ruin the surprise?" And all. And I was like, oh, "Ruin no. the surprise!" And I was like, "Oh." So then on the day, what I did was I got the I got the calendar, um, and I you were like, "Why? Why? What's in here?" <laughs> etch, 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 etch. <laughs> and then I went up to the the girl with the problem, and I started you know banging her. But no, I didn't. Uh, that solves the problem. Yeah. No, that does. What, what I did do was I just I actually left it in the bag and didn't open it. Until I got home and then opened Then you masturbated. Yes, and I did. But that whole scenario was like, I ain't going to get into trouble and work for this. Now, what I did do that I thought I was also going to get into trouble for was more recently before I left work. I had moved to an office. And again, sometimes when you're not in a comfort zone and people don't know you, you forget they don't know what your sense of humor is. Um, so I, I thought I'd do this little hilarious bit of banter. Like, you know, if you leave your computer open, you maybe send an email, something silly to somebody, or you do whatever else. This woman I worked with I left her computer open and I got into Google search and I I don't know why I put the search I did, but I, I went for hunky, topless, muscly Asian men. <laughs> right, because it's you know, it's that's what we like. And the man likes four adjectives. Yeah, and it was up in <laughs> Google Images and then I opened her work screen and then she's going back to my desk to be like, This is gonna be funny when she discovers this. So then she comes back to the desk, shuts down the computer like locks the computer goes home for the weekend oh god and I was like oh no so then the following week comes I'm out on site or whatever and I get a, a an email being like Dave did you um, and then I wrote back obviously being oh what me <coughs> no <laughs> full stop like that like thinking so so then when I get back there's a full like guy out at the office like an IT guy like, like traffic or who's put this up on her system because she has then gone to say that nobody has looked this up on her computer so somebody's hacked so into hacked the fucking into oh like, for oh, yeah. fuck's sake then, he, then the guy was like oh, it looks like you've just Google searched like hot muscly Asian men <laughs> and she's like oh I'm not really embarrassed and then there's a the whole thing and I, and I had to go up there and be like listen see whenever you asked was it me I thought you would have known that it was because it's very me. It's it's in my my. my you love hot, yeah. hunky Asian men. You know, I like Jack the Asian guys. What can I say? And she's like, I went through all that. Like I've wasted like a full morning of work. She was raging with me. About oh, grow up! You, you, yeah. We both know you weren't doing much anyway. Yeah, but it was, it was, it was bad. That was. I thought I'm going to get in trouble here. Nothing happened. No, but I did get in trouble only once about like wrecking my boss's office during a Christmas party which was also funny I put a Christmas tree on his desk and knocked a load of the tiles out and rubbed all the stuff on the board and wrote Happy Christmas on it and oh, it was yeah. all the figures you know so it was, you're a wee scamp it was bad. one year the and um, in my work they, they wrapped everything the boss had in, in uh, wrapping paper <laughs> <laughs> no yeah come <laughs> well no come and then wrapping paper yeah oh what a treat which works better than wrapping paper yeah. then come suppose could, could you put wallpaper up with, with enough semen I don't think so I think you could stick anything up with enough semen Anything. Anything. And I, okay, right. So I want to stick. I don't know, I want to stick you to a wall. Uh -huh. How with, much cum do I need? A lot, but with enough. No, come on, give me a give me a number. Gallon. How many oh, gallons? We're talking like swimming pool amount. Just, <laughs> Here, I know a guy can get you goggles from that. <laughs> <this. laughs> right, I'm going to let you go home here because you've worked today. Um, do. You? And I, we've got a couple of questions here that we'll go to. Oh, go on, go on. Um, where are we? Oh. Love a question. You know what? I think I feel like so I'm a big fan of. It and I would like to do one the next time I'm on. I assume I'll be back. Khaki. Yeah. Oh, um, I had to explain to my mom what Bukaki was one time because we were <laughs> playing cards against humanity and she didn't know. And I was like, "Oh, this is awful." Um, there are prank calls. I love the prank mm -hmm. calls. That's good shit. You know what? If I had known, could have one rally. Well, that's that's ready. the reason you have, have me to back. Come back. We yeah. will get you back. I'm really bad at them, but I do enjoy them. Um, right. Let's go. Dom. Dom Doyle has said. Dom. Big fan of you guys. Oh, thanks, Dom. I would love to have. Does he know I'm on, or is yeah, he just? He does. Yeah, I'd love to have Andrew and Alan. Or do you think you're order. two guys? 
Well, it could be. When Dom's a big guy too, so me and Dom together would be two Dominators. The Dominator. You could be like the Legion of Doom. Mm-hmm. Big powerhouse tag team. Yeah, um, but they were so cool because of those shoulder pads. But see, now when you look back at them, they're a wee bit sad, aren't they? <laughs> they are a wee bit yeah, sad. Yeah, they're a wee bit lame. Um, Davey loves it. Uh, Is that all he said? Bad Order Comedy Club. He'd love to have you down at Bad Order. Anytime. Would, would you go? Anytime you go. Anytime. I, I love arts. It, it has, one time I went to arts and uh, I had an article, so I went to this random cafe and I got mm. a Spanish latte, right? It was the nicest coffee I've ever had What's in my entire life. Latte? So it's a third coffee, a third milk, and a third condensed milk. So it's just like a, a, a dessert. Oh, right. And it was incredible. But do you know the cafe? Can you give well, me a Well, this is the thing. Yeah. So then I spent weeks thinking about it. I thought about it every uh-huh. single day and I went, right, I'm finally going to go back. And I was like, uh, what was the name of it? And I was Googling it and then I found and it had closed the previous Sunday. Forever? Forever. They well, sold it. That's nice though, isn't it, that you had that moment? No, it's not <laughs> because it's, it's like, it's like, I don't know, getting one blowjob in your life. But You'd then, rather die without one. But would you not like to continue Or have to one at death? Would you not can... <laughs> not, not, so, not immediately yeah. before. Like <laughs> not. Imagine you went outside that shop and just like sepakooed yourself. <laughs> Japanese <laughs> style to be like I would Good rather have it a death you know than an honourable death without yeah. the Spanish then, latte yeah. that's actually that's the thing if anybody's listening hit me up with some Spanish latte recommendations yeah, Spanish latte recommendations I, I've not had a Spanish latte I, I think it's I had a, Vietnam, a Vietnamese coffee maybe once and it's it comes not, it's, not, yes, milk, it's not that different it's no, just the ratio is slightly different yeah but I, I didn't like it was too much of a handling for me I like it all coming I had that and I had a nice egg mayo and bacon sandwich what was this do you remember the name of the place no that sounds great. An egg yeah. egg and bacon sandwich. An egg, mayo, bacon are hard to beat. Yeah. And um, lovely you fresh know, white bread. You know, it's a, a good place that I need to shout out in Arts, which is no, obviously no not. Not Oh, bakery. not, yeah, Tremendous. yeah. Tremendous. And you know what my gauge of a good place to go and eat is? If there's a lot of pensioners in it, those guys, they don't suffer from oh, the, those They love a sausage roll. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They love baked goods. They'll, you'll see a lot of pensioners frequenting garden centres. Mm-hmm. You get great baked potatoes there, great baked goods. Oh, like there's a there's a Tremendous. nice I'll shout out Greens in Lisburn Cracking place mm-hmm. We nice we deli If you're ever in Lisburn You want like a I'll nice never, sandwich I'll never return to Lisburn Well if you were, I was there on Saturday I saw I was that What was that about? I, don't even start me I was at Nick Mac Which is like Northern Ireland Creative Movement And Dance Nick Mad Oh in the Salto Gym In the Leisure Centre That is literally like Two minutes walk From where I live now You could have called over And seen your best mate Al I would have liked to have done that But instead I spent Eight hours in a leisure centre watching young children dance my child was there <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm sure out. she was uh, yeah, no, I just wasn't there for fun. but uh, yeah no green's pretty good although like it is that thing where it's like night of the nearly dead like mm-hmm. there's like you know, you're constantly being bumped into by pensioners with no spatial awareness yeah. but it's good food do you um, what, touch your foot again sorry oh yeah no it's alright I, I, I quite like it now it feels confident I was there you go it's not really my old office we treat. was right opposite at Susnai Yep, yep, yep. Is that still on the rip? That particular establishment? The barbers? That's us now. Yeah, so your man has a podcast with uh, Adam Byrne. There you go. Called Short Bag. No, not Short Bag. Short (laughs) short Bag and Say. Short short Back and What's Happening. Fair play. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, any more questions? Because I was discussing before, the thing that particularly irked me about it was it said... It's, it's a, b- a barber and, and banter lounge. <laughs> and like... Uh, There's I, no such thing. I don't know what a banter lounge is, you know. No. But I, yeah. I mean, you even like the Lavery's green room is good crack, but you wouldn't call it a banter lounge. No. I don't like a banter lounge. Banter lounge. Um, but what were you doing there? Questions? So, Questions. So yeah, the question was effectively coming. Hold on. <laughs> it's coming now. It's coming. Bear with me. We are here. Right. Oh, I love the idea that immediately before I... <laughs> <laughs> you orgasm you yes. say bear with me <laughs> <laughs> I won't be a but, moment but no that was the point I wanted to make you and we got back to it because again I'm talking about coming you'd <laughs> said it's like getting one blowjob but never again but you would you would then until you die it's like so pathetic <laughs> you'd be searching for that perfect blowjob so it begs to or any blowjob yeah, but it begs to ar- argue now that there is a, a Spanish latte out there that will satiate you to that level I, I want a Spanish it. latte so good that I, I'll be content never having another blue job yeah right <laughs> wow right the devil comes to you <laughs> and goes listen what you can have wow every day in, in hell right uh, you get one wee bit of respite so you're gonna have the blue job or so the Spanish latte every day have a blue job or a Spanish latte I, you know what I'm having 
Well, a Spanish laugh. Well, let me just say this. <laughs> yeah. Here's what would make the difference for me. Is it possible that the rest of the stuff that they're doing to me in hell, I could sleep through? Yeah. Because if I could sleep through it, then the blowjob, because I'll be sleepy after, while the Spanish latte will be wide awake. Yeah, but don't they say sometimes in hell you have to do shit stuff, like push boulders up a hill and then the boulder falls and, and you get a, and get a blowjob? And back again, yeah. But like, I feel like... That sounds no, better than the current you know scenario. What? I feel like there's never a time of the day that I would... I could not get a Spanish latte into me. <laughs> you know, I feel like at any point someone could hand me one and I would be able it's to nice. take it. Yeah, so yeah. I, I would love a recommendation for a Spanish yeah, latte. So any any people out there, if you own a coffee shop, if you work at a coffee shop, if you do Spanish lattes, I'll tell you what we'll do. Do we is, review are This we? is gonna be we're gonna go on the tour of 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 maybe Ireland, maybe it's an all Ireland thing. <laughs> maybe it's in, UK and hunt for the best Europe worldwide. We'll the go to best Spain. Spanish latte. Let's do you it. You can go to Alicante for about 40 quid return. We'll well, just there we go. We, we, are, we are now looking for the best Spanish latte and we'll get a film. We'll put it either out. Just, we'll just fuck Patreon. We'll put it out public. Yeah. We'll go, Alan Dave sir. This is the Spanish best latte. day of my life. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. And if we can't get a good Spanish latte, I'll give you a blue job. <laughs> there you go. That's fair. Just lose, lose then. Yeah. So, but this, uh, we haven't even got the Dom's question yet. Sorry, Dom. So, have you ever seen anything weird that you wish... You never had to see two guards, one cup. And what's the weirdest conspiracy theory? It's conspiracy theory you have believed. What we talked about this on TV. I don't think it's out yet, but like about uh, conspiracy theories that I'm. A, I'm very, you know, I really believe in conspiracy theories. Full stop. But I'm trying to think of one that's like silly. I believe that they deliberately make your iPhone lose all power over two years. I think that's true. Yeah. I think the planned obsolescence thing is true. Like corporations make stuff deliberately shit enough with to break yeah. with a lifespan because we were in getting new phones recently because I mean I'm not I'm not a baller or anything I'm not like just able to just drop money on a new phone it was an upgrade and we were in and there was a guy working in the phone shop and they were these new flip phones like the new generation flip yeah, phones I, I feel like I don't trust those well you're going to trust them even less now so he said there's like it's like 15,000 flips it has before that's not that many before, really no before not with the way I'm on the phone exactly so it wanks a day. <laughs> it lasts you three weeks. Yeah. You like any new phone. No, that's Especially if you close good. your dick in it. <laughs> oh no! Like a, that's a nice. No, it's not. That's not. I was going to say it's a nice sandwich. <laughs> it's far from. It's the world's worst hot dog. You go into like doorsteps and be like, "We've got a special." Why have you put a mole rat in between two slices of cracker? <laughs> but it's not even cracker. It's just a folded up phone. I mean, like, you can't even eat it. It's eight ninety nine as well. <laughs> Couldn't put egg mayo and bacon on that. Oh, but. Um, you could. <laughs> Do you remember you used, there used to be, a, uh, maybe I'm wrong and that's just what I'm searching for, but there used to be a real like period of time, I feel like in the early to mid noughties, similar to when like Two <laughs> Girls One Cup, but just where penises would, would replace things in like funny shots. Yeah, so yeah, you'd yeah. have like a series of like sausage rolls and every, oh, there's a penis. Ha, yeah. Ha, yeah. Bring that back. That would be a lot of fun. I feel as well like food and sex was a 2000. Things. Remember that a lot of people were like, oh, you need a bit of food and sex. Make it, and you're like, you yeah, don't actually. No. It was you actually, didn't you? in a bit of your stand up that, uh, and it's something that I always think about <laughs> I'm interested to know what this is going to be when you were saying when we were talking about people having sex in weird places mm-hmm. and I think you said there's no better place for sex than the bed I said yeah it's flat it's warm you can turn the lights out you don't have to see her disappointed face <laughs> that's the dream but that is almost built it's built for it's fucking built for sex much like myself now <laughs> <laughs> fuck off <laughs> But like I have never got the whole oh let's go it's a mer- no that's bad no it's better than bad I've had the odd occasion with the moment with no choice you know but it's like yeah. that or nothing but it's like, like the canyon slogan who's better than bed you know <laughs> no one who better than bedroom <laughs> nowhere like I, I I have I'm very unadventurous in terms of location but yeah me too bed what's in there though you know yeah. but the, for a game even people like people don't realize a man of my size. The, the body wise not the I like penis. the size of car you would yeah. need you'd no. need like Hulk Hogan's monster truck yeah I, I would be, and I would need to be in the back of it yeah. know, out the back <laughs> I on the bed yes, on, on, the, on bed. the bed <laughs> like yeah I couldn't just and like even like um, <clears throat> get handy jays and all I wouldn't be I wouldn't like that so all. why where's it go yeah but the, you don't have to drive it home with a sticky belly no Mickey told me a story and it's, it's much like your bed story that are, like it's, there's nowhere better not that sticks in my mind Mickey said one day he was going home in the bus and he caught his teacher having a wank in his car <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, like oh, I don't need him to be I don't never know why so he said the bus was higher and he was driving past his teacher just driving <laughs> having a wank in the car 
<laughs> to be fair, probably like maybe went school, maybe he lived in Moira or something. Yeah. That's all right. I'll time to wait. Like, but you know, how stressful a day must you have in school? Well, you're Mickey Partless <laughs> teacher. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it's such a I always I, that's the one thing I can never get because some people like I once had a friend I'll not say it was because he'll fall out me again <laughs> but I tagged him in a, a post because he had told this story once and he had a wank at work <laughs> and there was a thing on Facebook <laughs> and it's just a guy like leaning like this it was like tag a mate who wanks at work <laughs> and I just thought obviously yeah and tagged him he unfriended me <laughs> And he's one of my best friends in the world. And I was like, why'd you do that? And he goes, oh, if my wife sees that, she'll think I wanked at work. But he didn't wank at work. <laughs> but. And I said to him, why did you just not say, it's only a joke, I don't. And he was like. It's weirder <laughs> now. Goes, Me and Dave fell out. Why he says I wank at work. <laughs> and she'd be like, but you don't. And he'd be like. Yeah. Oh, but I don't like the implication. I know. Uh, but then, he says something like, well, I couldn't lie to her. So if she asked me, I'd be like, yes, I do. <laughs> I wank all the time. <laughs> but I remember the conversation. I only got 20 minutes for lunch. I'm going to find the time. In the group of our friends. And he was like, have any of you guys ever just been horny during work? And we we're like, not really. <laughs> well, no, I've not had that bit. I haven't had the second bit. Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, but then I, I, feel like I have like to remember I used to measure inside legs, you know. <laughs> Where I was a suit fitter, <laughs> I wasn't when I was in the civil service. But I, 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 I'm never like I always. I'm always shifty after a wank anyway, so I can go back to my shifty. Desk. I'm sleepy. I mean? You'd like, be like, "Why is Alan really drowsy?" Yeah, Someone'd be like, "Dave, why are you about to have a heart attack? Just the blood pressure, big red head." I don't know what you're talking about. Take the rest of the day off, mate. You're too stressed. Yeah. There you see, works. But was uh, there another question? I can not remember. <laughs> Let's get it up. Um. Let's have a look here. Uh, Let's get it up at work. And then wank it off. <laughs> have you ever wanted to buy something cool for yourself only to have your partner list it um, as boring? Or list what other boring things you could spend money on. So, like, you've t- talked about getting... Right, right. well, hold on. What I want to say is whoever sent this question in, you just need to have a conversation with your partner. I think you might yeah. be projecting slightly. Did, uh, go go yeah. and buy that BMX. Yeah, but... Like, see this, this is, case in point, see this particular, mm-hmm. I bought this for this purpose of, like, a dog, Vinny. You like a mascot? That. So have him as a mascot. Now, this had been delivered to my house when I was out, and Catherine got it. I was like, what's this weird? Like, it looked like it came in a box. It was like some sort of, like, the, like, the, like ornament. Mm-hmm. And she was like, and it was in and around, I think, her birthday time. And she had thought that this ornament, and she had opened it. Oh, she had, it. like, a fucking Emma Thompson in Love Actually moment? Yeah, so she thought the ornament was for her. And then she was like, really? And then whenever I brought it to the podcast, she was like, oh, thank fuck. I thought that was my birthday present. And then I was like, oh, thank God, because I fully really forgot it was your birthday. But <laughs> <laughs> you saved the day. But I'm trying to think, I, I mean, one time I wanted to spend quite a lot of money on getting several tattoos. And then. Have and you then got she, any? I've got four. What are they of? Any? Anything? So anything? Now you go, that's a bit weird. Oh, there's one that I'm embarrassed by. Mm-hmm. So, well. So, what does it say? Always coming. Always coming at work. Um, <laughs> so I've got the ACDC logo here on my left arm. I actually have also, maybe it's, this is so lame. When we went to see ACDC in Glasgow, there was a tattoo party that was like mm-hmm. 50% off if it was renewed. So we all got the lightning bolt like on our ankle because yeah. one of us is a doctor and couldn't have any visible tattoos, okay. right? But we laughed at a stag do in the airport that were wearing matching polo shirts. Uh-huh. And then we all went and got matching tattoos. Yeah. So what's that say? I've got a nice one. Uh, which is a oven dial turned to 200 degrees which is my mum died a few years ago it's like uh, she was a terrible cook they just mm-hmm. fucked everything in the oven I didn't want to get mum yeah. with a wee heart and then I've got this one right which is lyrics from a song that I got when I was very vulnerable after a breakup in uh-huh. 2013 uh, that say uh, life is about love last minutes and lost evenings right mm-hmm. it's a song by Frank Turner very lame but also there's a spelling mistake in it, oh, no. and I've but, never got it fixed oh. well now is the time to get it fixed well I just get covered because it's embarrassing yeah. mm-hmm. It's quite embarrassing. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, should be bullied for that. Yeah, I mean, what you should do is just do a burk crash and perform topless and just get it out. I'm naked. I, I used to know. do that. Do you remember? Do you remember I used to have that yeah. bit that ended with me taking my shirt off? That's right. And yeah. having a nervous breakdown. Yeah, but Faking a nervous breakdown. Right, do you know what? That could come back. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be yeah. a, it could get a lot more real. Would you ever? Is there any more tattoos on the radar now? You think? You'd like oh, that? I think I would. I would get quite. A, I, I like the idea of having a sleeve, but instead of just like you know, people get a sleeve, it's all one design, but you just get like smaller ones of all your favorite things. 
So the, the use of the song, what are some of your favourite things you get in your sleeve? Fuck, well, it'll be something wrestling related. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Vince McMahon? Just his f- no, full portrait of him. No, maybe that taxi sent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> re your last pick. Um, <laughs> or, you know, I don't know, fucking uh, some salt and chilli chicken. You know? That is nice. A big glass of Coke. You know? It's not a bag. Pardon? Not a bag. That too. Yeah. That's, t- that's two separate ones. Uh, you know, just all my favourite things. Nice I, pint. I found this. Remember, not all food and drink. I, I thought William sometimes does Vince McMahon's hair. I found a photo that was just perfect. Oh yeah, comparison. there he is. Yep, there he is. Both of them. You're fired. You're. Uh, I mean, you're fired. He's in trouble, isn't he? Who, William? Vince. Oh yeah. Wait, wait till it comes out about William though. Well, what's going to be happening? I d- William don't do anything because if something does come out, then they will cut this clip and be like, they knew. They That's knew. true, yeah. They facilitated. We, we don't actually know. No. I mean, I have my suspicions, but I don't know. Um, if you could create your own experience land, like the failed Wonka one, what would you come up with? <sighs> own experience? So I could have anything? Yeah. So, well, a little bit oh, of- I want um, eight, 70s land. Okay. Right. And what would happen in seventies? Seventies land. You just go to a nice British boozer in the seventies. You know what I mean? Nice packet of crisps, pint of bitter for like a pound. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a chip shop. You get you get the fucking ends. You know, this the, the scraps. Oh yes. Yeah. And uh, then you go home and and TV's already off. You just go to bed at ten o'clock because there's nothing to watch. Maybe have a wank. <laughs> or sex in the missionary position with the lights off. Yeah. More my so, speed. But then, if it's going to be like the Wonka experience, it's going to be a bit shit. Yeah, but the seventies was a bit shit. So do you feel like that's the era you would most thrive in? I feel like I make the most sense in the 70s. I think if you, if you put me in there right now, nobody had bad an eyelid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good... Like, 70s land, I think I would enjoy it. Like, I I don't think there's anything better <clears throat> than a nice afternoon down the pub with friends. Yeah. You, know? you switch TV on and there's a bloody Ted Heath again. You yeah. Know? <laughs> What's that, a dick? Yes. <laughs> there was rumours about him, you know. You weren't allowed to do any, like, sexual fun... I open stuff in the 70s sure you weren't getting in trouble for it no? oh you would have in like comedy clubs you'd have been a bit blue no but I mean like being gay and all was oh no that's not what the rumour was about Al Ted Heath no but I don't I'm not saying it was I'm just saying like being gay no you 70s. couldn't really I, I have unless a, you were like you know playing it for laughs in a sitcom yeah, yeah well I, I have a gay benefactor who would tell me stories about what it was like being gay in the 70s didn't sound fun can't imagine it was because, like, no, you. So okay, now you're guilting me into getting rid of seventies land, but like, no, you know, but like you don't. You can go to the good parts of seventies land. You yeah, yeah. No, no. In in this seventies land, the reason it's shit is because it's not a good representation of the seventies, yeah. and as a result, being gay is fine. Sweet, but this guy was telling me basically that sometimes the lads, and I mean by the lads, the the paramilitaries, or the boys, would set up like fake gay rooms, so you could have like special knocks. You knock the door and you go in, and then you can have your your gay experiences. But then sometimes the boys would set up, but then you'd go in and they'd beat you because you were gay. Oh. It's just sly. I mean, like, that's the worst thing about the paramilitary. It's not the bombs, not the murders. Homophobia. No need. No. And then Especially because it's quite gay. Ba- you know, like, like I feel like they're all in wee confined spaces together for decades. Yeah. But then they just... They're, they, yeah. you know, and also, I've, I remember reading that book, as a Generation Kill, about the fucking army in Iraq. Mm-hmm. And apparently, like, after combat, you're really aroused and you have to have, like, four wanks to calm down. Mm-hmm. So, like, the boys, they're going and doing whatever they're doing, whatever, you know, whatever side it is. And then they're like, man, I need to feel better. Just wank me off. Yeah. Well, I mean, that uh, I, I'm all for it. You know, the Taliban do And they're thing? like, I can wank you off or you can have a Spanish latte. You know what? If I'm being again, it's always Spanish latte. In the, especially in the seventies, well, that is exotic in the seventies. There's a tattoo for you to get. It's always Spanish latte, no matter what. That's the opposite. Thing, yeah, yeah, it's always Spanish latte. Because <laughs> oh, I, I, the first thing I thought about when you mentioned Spanish latte was the wrestling move, the Spanish fly. Oh yeah, yeah. But it, it wouldn't be as fun as a Spanish latte to be in the receipt. There's no condensed milk in that. No, but you know what? Now I'm going to actually. I feel like it's something I've not had in life. I feel like I want to experience well, the Spanish Well, it's going to be a series. Just once people get back to us and let us know. Yes. So anyone, DM or right underneath on the on the YouTube comments, the best spots for Spanish It'd be nice lattes. me and Dave can hang out socially. We don't yeah. we don't really do that. But you know what? We, we were supposed to do that. I had arranged a nice date. He, you know, we were going to go and watch a show together. I've got his tickets. And now this guy's decided I, to now, now Also, with, with the proviso that you didn't pay for the tickets. But I used my influence... To get us, yeah. I, well, I, 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 another so another show. comedian used their influence to get me to open for them in Straban. Stand up wise, or both. 
There's two shows, so in between. I mean, you got to kill the time, don't you? True. Well, you know what? You could have a wank at work. I'll be like, well, no, I'll be like, right, here's the deal. You can have a blowjob yeah. or a Spanish latte. <laughs> oh, you know, that, that, listen, and I know I've got a lot of really, really great listeners and a lot of really good good supporters of the podcast and I and I, I love you guys but I'm sure there's a few bad boys and people to listen to see if you're involved in like any sort of nothing squad or any sort of like paramilitary nothing you know, squad like nothing squad that, was- <laughs> that sounds like something completely different <laughs> it's all come all day yeah. everything <laughs> I mean, maybe they, they didn't think about that when they named it. We we're part of the nutting squad where we kill touts, yeah, by jacking them to death. Like you dehydrate them through wanks until they die, and they end up like mummified. And how many wanks do you think? I know we're trying to wrap up, but how many wanks do you think it would take to dehydrate you to death? <laughs> I'd find out. Again, uh, that's it. It'll be on the Patreon soon. Uh-huh. But that's what they should do instead of being like, listen. We're either going to shoot you and no, in fact, that doesn't work. <laughs> See, we're either going to shoot you in the head or you can have a Spanish latte. Well, obviously, you're going to... I didn't think I went through. Maybe if he's allergic to coffee. Oh, Alan, where, where can people find you other than in a uh, cafe looking for Spanish lattes and wanks? Um, <laughs> or having a blowjob? Uh, you definitely can't find me doing that. Uh, <laughs> he didn't know you were that flexible. One day, well, yeah, one, day, one day I'll be able to stretch far enough any day now. I am. I could put my leg behind my head. I'm quite yeah, flexible. But you'd be the sort of guy who, instead of be like, I'm going to give myself a DJ, instead of going that way, you would try to contort that way. <laughs> In the back. It's too difficult. Oh. Anyway, oh. yes, uh, Alan Irwin, comedian on uh, Instagram. Um, also have two podcasts, Stupid Sexy Podcast, if you like The Simpsons, and The Worst There Was, if you like wrestling. Nice. You're um, going to be a guest on that very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of this as well. In fact, no. Bang, bang. Wear, I'm going to wear my, my scissors. We don't video the episodes. Oh, daddy. I'll stick with people. Will we'll use your... We'll, come, we'll just do it in your camera. Listen, you're more than welcome to do that. We Perfect. We can do a video episode. Um, but you know what Catherine looked up when she went to get me that? Mm. That daddy ass shirt, didn't I tell you that? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, instead of scissor me daddy ass, she had Googled finger me ass daddy. <laughs> and I, I, I love... Finger me it. ass yeah. daddy. <laughs> finger me ass daddy. Love it, love it. Alan, pleasure. Thank you very much. As always. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I, wait, I, you forgot. It's the oh, fucking oh, North yes. Down World Order. The North Down oh, World Order. Too expensive. Oh, too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, North Down, if you have Spanish lattes. Hit me up. I'm the slack guy.